Hello, and welcome to the Direct Spams. I'm Mitch the Quack, and I hope your days are less quack than mine. Today, we're going to be looking at Vulgen's return in 8.1, and speculating about what could have influenced the death and resurrection of the previous war chief of the Horde. This content is going to be slightly different than normal. Once we reach a certain timestamp, this theory will diverge into the Fell version of this theory, that specifically relates to the Dreadlords, otherwise known as Nathrazine. If you want to see the light version of this theory, it will eventually pop up, but not today. The reason I'm doing this is because this theory has one basis that eventually leads into two completely different paths, both of which are valid theories. However, to theorise about both at once would be a bit much, and so I have opted to separate them. If you'd like to support the creation of this content, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like this content, hit the like button. And if you'd like to stay notified on the quackery, hit the bell below. Or you can follow me on Twitter. So, to quickly recap for those who don't know, Vol'jin was appointed leader of the Horde after Garrosh Hellscream. On the Broken Shore, Vol'jin was mortally wounded. On his deathbed, Vol'jin appointed Sylvain's war chief at the apparent behest of the Lower. And from there, all hell broke loose. From confusion to anger, we've all had and seen reactions to Sylvanas becoming War Chief. It is however suffice to say the reason why Vol'jin made his choice has been the topic of debate for some time. Did the Lower really pick Sylvanas? And if so, why? With the release of Balfour Azeroth, the expectation of an explanation behind Vol'jin's choice was expected, especially as a quest relating to Vol'jin's urn appears as a part of the Horde's endgame questing experience. This quest, however, only reveals that Vol'jin's spirit is missing, and raises more questions than it answers. And now that you're caught up, we now come to patch 8.1, where we get some insight into Vol'jin's choice, or more precisely, the circumstances of Vol'jin's choice. And let's just say, the questions that come from 8.1 are crazy. Because not only does Vol'jin not know who told him to appoint Sylvanas as War Chief, he also has honestly no idea as to why his spirit is still on Azeroth. The quests that relate to Vol'jin eventually have him approach three Masters of Death, Aeir, Von Sumdi, and the Lich King, and all deny whispering Sylvanas' name and bringing him back. All of them are also not happy with Sylvanas being War Chief, as she apparently throws off the balance. The assumed balance here being the balance between life and death. Now, the questions that struck me the hardest from Vol'jin's story was who slash what and why? Who whispered to Vol'jin and who brought him back and why did they do it? Or in a more broader sense, who wants to tip the balance of life and death? And this is where stuff gets really weird. Since if you consider the entities Vol'jin approaches, Wonsamdi, the Lich King and Aeir, at least one of them, the Lich King has been making considerable moves to exert their influence, yet even he says Sylvanas being War Chief throws the balance, which either means he's lying, or whatever's influencing these current events has an immensely dangerous goal, as incredibly worse than a scourged Azeroth. What's also interesting is this interaction Aegir has with Vulture. Who be having such power? Could it be the same one who bid me to name Sylvanas War Chief? You have been touched by the hand of Valor. Such a noble force does not scheme for mortal thrones. Now, the first way to take this is whoever brought Vol'jin back has no interest in Sylvanas being War Chief. And in turn, it was two different forces that influenced Vol'jin's death and resurrection, which is the way Vol'jin took the statement. The other way to take the statement is that Sylvanas was chosen to become War Chief for a much grander purpose. And since she wasn't chosen to be War Chief to save the Horde, but because Sylvanas in the position of War Chief is going to, or has already done, something that's going to shake the universe. Basically, whatever scheme is going on probably has something to do with Azeroth itself, or something much grander. This is where the Legion and the Light, specifically the missing Nathrazim and Kelia Methyl, become very important. Because unless we're dealing with a new player altogether, which is quite plausible, but I'm going to assume for this theory that we're not, then what Vol'jin's quests show is a lower, one somebody who is innately attached to nature and death, death itself, and the damned, as attached to the Lich King, and ordered death with Aeir, do not want to throw out the cosmic balance. This in turn leaves three confirmed greater magical forces left, the Light, the Void, and Disorder. 
Now, the Void is almost instantly kicked out of the realms of possibility with this theory. Because where, yes, the Void does want to throw off the balance, the Void's evident fear and hatred towards death and the undead push it to the sidelines. Nazoth or other forces within the Void might be outliers, but for now, Nazoth's forces, at the very least, have no reason to want undeath to spread across Azeroth. Azara and the Naga seem to be more than enough at this point. And so this leaves the Light and Disorder as the last two possible suspects to be throwing out the balance. And oh boy, these two sides are so suspect, it's not funny. So, Disorder, the Legion, and those missing Nathrazine. Of all the cosmic forces in the universe that would want to cause imbalance in the universe, Disorder is the number one force. Demons, in particular Nathrazim, who are OG demons, have reveled in Disorder and unbalance assumedly since the beginning of everything. So there are many reasons for why the Nathrazim would have wanted to put Sylvanas in charge of the Horde. The first reason is the Nathrazim want Disorder, but not only that, at the time of Sylvanas being put in the position of Warchief, the Nathrazim wanted the Legion to win. And we mustn't forget, the Alliance and the Horde did not defeat the Legion. We, the players, and our Order Halls did. The reason for this was after the massacre that was the Broken Shore, which was set up by the Nathrazim, the Horde and the Alliance no longer trust each other enough to work together. And so, in one move, the two forces that had a proven record of beating the Legion, together, were taken out in the first few days of the Legion's invasions. And to top all this off, if the Nathrazim did whisper to a dying, fell-poisoned Vulgin and told him to put Sylvanas in charge, in two moves they basically ensured the Horde and the Alliance would never consolidate their differences and work together. Because after the Broken Shore, Sylvanas became public enemy number one for the Alliance as she is still considered the reason why King Varian Rin died. And if Sylvanas' appointment was a Nathrazine ploy, even now the genius and cunning of the Nathrazine begin to shine through. Why? Well, even with the Legion defeated, the Horde and the Alliance are still at each other's throat. And the reason is Sylvanas. Sylvanas has got to be the most contentious and disorder sowing character that Azeroth has seen in a very long time. So if the Nathrazim did conspire to put Sylvanas in charge, I can once again not stress enough how much of a testament the current state of Azeroth is to the cunning and manipulative genius of the Nathrazim. Now as for the question, why would the Nathrazim bring Vulcan's spirit back? The answer to that lies in the how, and how they pulled off a large portion of this theory. For the Nathrazim are masters of deception. From impersonating spirits to stealing spirits, to whisper a lie to Vulcan as he died from fell poisoning, then whisk his spirit away, is not a hard task for them. And that's not mentioning Kil'jaeden the Deceiver had to learn his craft from somewhere, and if he didn't learn his deceptive tricks from the Nathrazim, there is a good chance they learnt something from him. And speaking of the Deceiver, we actually get to what genuinely implicates the Nathrazim in what happened to Vulcan's spirit. For the Nathrazim have helped create a similar spirit to Vulgin, as in a spirit that has been to the other side and brought back, becoming more powerful in the process. That spirit was the Lich King. In Chronicle Volume 3, something that caught my eye but that was never truly explained was the explanation as to why the Lich King was so powerful. The line reads as follows. Kil'jaeden passed the Orc spirit through death, and revived him as a spectral entity. That's it. That is the sole explanation as to why the Lich King was so powerful and where he got his abilities from. And of all the entities Vol'jin talks to, it's the Lich King that says, Vol'jin, your soul has walked on the other side and returned. You have been altered more than you know. The reason the Lich King says this is because he knows. The Lich King knows what happened to Vol'jin, and the reason he knows is because what happened to the Lich King happened to Vol'jin. They were both passed through death and brought back. When the Lich King looks at Vol'jin, 
he sees himself. He sees the same magic that was used on him. The same magic that is specifically related to the Legion and the Dreadlords. And what's even more damning is of all the missing Dreadlords that didn't appear in Legion, there is one that had a direct hand in the creation of the Lich King and has a direct ties to the Scourge, Undeath, and the Scarlet Crusade. That Nathrezim is Malganus. And of all the Nathrezim, other than Vary Mathras, who is confirmed dead, Malganus is the one who has the biggest vendetta against mortals. In particular, we adventurers after what we did to him in Ice Crown. And this isn't mentioning Anatheron, who is apparently the second in command of the Nathrezim, and attacked Hyjal during the Third War with the Scourge. He is also MIA. How I also explain Vol'jin's spirit being touched by the Hand of Valor in this theory is by assuming that the Hand of Valor did not raise Vol'jin, but instead freed him. As in, freed him from whatever captivity the Nathrezim assumedly had his spirit in, while he was assumedly being experimented on. So, just to make things clear, Vol'jin chooses Sylvanas as War Chief and admits something dark and powerful is stopping him from remembering who. He is then basically told by the Lich King, what happened to me, happened to you. And, there are two Nathrezim, Masters of Deception, who are directly connected to death and the undead and have been missing since the start of Legion. One of which, at the very least, hates us mortals. The last two things I'll add about these circumstances being an Atherazine ploy is in the Deaths of Chromi scenario, you have two types of undead skulking around the Dragon Shrines. One group is related to the Lich King. The other is related to the Nathrazine, and I doubt that's by accident. The Thraxian also says, after Argus's defeat. Our war may be over, but many battles lie ahead. Just because the Legion is defeated, doesn't mean every demon in existence has surrendered. His point is grave, but apt. If we still have demons working on Azeroth, specifically Nathrazine, the likelihood of them wanting war is very high. The likelihood of them playing with the spirits of the dead is extremely high. And considering both of these issues basically define Vol'jin's circumstances, the likelihood of a begrudged Nathrezim being behind Sylvanas' appointment and Vol'jin's spirit still walking around Azeroth is almost a guarantee. But with all this said, do you think this is plausible or possible? Leave a comment. The best speculation is always done with the community. If you prefer to talk about your lore though, I usually hang out in the Shinies and Lucky Dudes Discord. And even if I'm not around, the small community that usually is, is amazing to talk lore, speculation, or anything World of Warcraft with. So, until next time, have a nice day!